Hello, internet world. Hello, interwebs world. Coming to you live, <laughs> the Sabian Education Network roundtable, uh, our Friday afternoon roundtable, which has become, a, I would say, a highlight, wouldn't you, Dom, of your week? It really is, because we get a chance to kind of brainstorm ideas. We get to meet people and refresh ourselves with new ideas. Steve and Jim, great to see you guys. It's great to see you, man. Hey guys. I'm very, I'm very excited for today, and I'm going to try to keep my, um, my intro to a minimum here because we have a lot to cover. We have uh, two guests back who were very popular presenters and also friends of SEN who have done multiple things. So, of course, everybody, most of our SEN fans and followers know Mr. Jim Toscano up there on the right. Hey, Jim. Hey, hey. Yeah. How are you? Good to see you guys. And, and back uh, underneath him uh, on the lower right – from the University of Miami, also a friend of SEN, participated in our Miami event and was on with a webinar with me. Back here, Mr. Steve Rucker. Hey, Steve. Yeah, hey, how you doing? Steve. And of and course- It looks like Kylie's gonna join too, so. That's right, we need, <laughs> we need someone to keep all, keep us in line and she's got the job, so. Awesome. Uh, and then of course, below me, my, the abbot to my Costello, Mr. <laughs> Don, <laughs> uh, Mr. Don Famularo, uh, Coming to yes. us from Long Island and squeaking in at the, the buzzer, Laurel. solving his his uh, technical issue. So great. The Laurel to his hearty. Oh my gosh. That's right. We <laughs> could we could go on all day. Um, I I could you could I could even say the rich to my Krupa if I was going to go there. Oh, <laughs> nice. I like it. Nice. Um, well, welcome everybody. I see we have a lot of our regular stalwarts back here. So today we're devoting to an update on technology. When Steve and I did our webinar, he had a lot to share, and I thought it would be great to have him back um, just to focus on this topic. And then Jim, of course, has been our resident expert advising pros all throughout the industry, so he has some updates for us. So, um, Steve, why don't I throw it to you to start? Um, and uh, I know you have a bunch of different hints and tips yeah, yeah. on technology. I don't know if we can cram this in in this hour, but uh, you know, I, I want to leave time for Jim as well. Um, it's been a crazy ride, right? I mean, when this thing hit, uh, University of Miami was on spring break, and to their credit, the you know the Frost School of Music really got things up and running in just a, a couple of weeks, and it's been a learning experience for all of us down the road. Um, so, the first thing I wanted to do is just kind of share the the different levels of of teaching that that we encountered all right it, because it's kind of interesting it's it's like my students really ran the gamut the the, the first level was no instrument <laughs> you know they they went home for spring break and you know didn't make it back and here they are with a practice pad so you know obviously you have to teach your you have to to modify your your teaching a bit and and so it was you know some pad work, uh, maybe face to face on Zoom, um, possibly on the phone, you know. Uh, and so that that was sort of the, you know, the kind of the worst possible scenario. But, you know, we could also listen to music, talk about music. You know, there's a lot of stuff to, to talk about that sort of transcends, you know, paradise. So that and the next level was, um, all right, I've got an instrument, I've got no gear. Right. So this thing hit. I fled. I went home, left my microphone and all my equipment down at the university. So, you know, in that situation, really, um, if you've got a phone, you can still record. So there's a lot of recording going on. Um, you know, you can make sure that the original sound is set up on Zoom if you're using Zoom. Um, Zoom's been sort of my go-to because I've been using Zoom for years uh, for other uses. But uh, if original sound is set up, you know, your drums can sound okay. You know, it's, it's, it's passable. So you can either, uh, you know, uh, carry on through Zoom in, in real time or, or record on your phone, upload, and then we talk about the recording. And Joe, I think we talked about this last session. Uh, there's something I call pandemic precision that's been happening. There's so much recording that's going on that, you know, 
drummers are becoming really hypercritical of some areas that they're playing that they may not have been aware of before. Um, because they're listening, they're recording, and they're actually, this is the second thing you need to do, listen to the recording, right? <laughs> so a lot of guys will, you know, will record and then just never get around to listen to, listening to it. So my ensembles, you know, obviously you can't put a bunch of people in a room together. So we would, um, we record one person at a time. And, you know, I remember the, the first track that we did, the drummer took, I don't know, 247 takes because, you know, he wanted to get it right. You know, he didn't want to throw this thing up on, you know, in a logic session and have it be, uh, you know, kind of halfway there. So, so that's the next, the next level. Uh, past that are, are students that have mics, interface, have all of that stuff together, right? And then... Uh, they can record to a DAW. Uh, one of the cool things about Zoom, I sound, I sound like a like a, I'm working for Zoom here, but uh, uh, it's the one it's the one I've been using most. Um, you can uh, request a remote control over the DAW. So let's say you know one of my students uploads uh, themselves playing with track, and then we share screen, and we go into the DAW, and we can. I can request remote control. It's a little scary at first, you know. I'm not going to delete your tracks, you know. Um, and I can go in, for instance, I can go into Logic and solo tracks, and we can and we can really get really granular with the listening experience. So, so that's kind of a kind of a cool feature of that. Um, and then the sort of the the top level for me, I had one student who got a great drum sound. Everything's mic'd up. He's going through a sound system and he's using original sound and, and actually miking himself through that sound system. So then we can do everything live in real time, right? He can play with the track. We can talk. Um, uh, you know, I can play. It's, you know, that's the best experience. And I just have to throw this out there and I'll, I'll, I'll let, uh, I'll turn it over to Jim. Uh, I had a session just a little while ago with Andrew Atkinson, one of, a dear friend of mine, one of my former students from years ago. And I was testing some, some things and we, we both got on and, you know, the, the latency thing, we still really don't have that down. And yeah, yeah. even if you, can account for the latency. And I can talk about this later. I've got a, another former student doing some, some testing over in London with this. But the latency is not consistent. So there's a little bit of drift in there, right? Yeah. But, but we got on, I'm playing through my V-drum, so I'm going direct in. He's got his stuff mic'd up through Pro Tools. So his sound is amazing. And we found that tempo where we were basically backwards from each other and, and played <laughs> for a little while. It's kind of fun, you know? Um, he put it best. He said, so one guy's having fun. The other guy has to suffer uh, <laughs> because he, he's hearing, you know, I'm hearing him backwards, but he hears me because I've, I've, I've made that adjustment for the latency. And so you find that tempo, right, where the latency is exactly an eighth note or exactly a sixteenth note, exactly a quarter note. And, can, and you can actually play. It just sounds like you, you've got the beat turned around. That's all. <laughs> so. One guy. One guy has to be the alpha dog, and the exactly. other exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the other has to just. Yeah. Um, well, let's come back to. Um, I know Jim. I'm um, Steve. You prepared a lot of uh, other materials and links and things. I had no idea you could. You could like like a go to assist session. You can take control of somebody else's stuff. You, you can. Know, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, in, in, in Zoom, and you know, it's any DAW. As a matter of fact, it's not limited to a DAW. I mean, you basically take over the system. So uh, I have a regular Monday night hang with my students. A guy was playing a YouTube video. I requested access because he didn't make it full screen. So I jumped in full screen, and you can adjust, you know, whatever you want. So it's oh. it's kind of a cool feature. Oh, of course. So, so it's so it's control of the computer by Zoom. Of course, it's uh, yeah. It's not just. Oh. So then that I don't know, guys. This sounds pretty terrifying. Steve's got his students. He's like in Logic. He's like with the mouse. Like this kick drum. You were ahead. This one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So we'll come back to that, Jim. Um, why don't you give us a little overview of uh, what's been happening on your end since our last opening sessions with this? Yeah, sure. And um, actually, just on that last point that Steve made about t 
taking control of someone else's computer. It used to be that you could only do that with like splash top streamer or one of those applications where you're doing uh, remote computer control, but having that right inside the zoom sharing window is a great. Oh, there we go. Um, but I don't, Steve, does that work on um, on tablets as well or only on like laptops and desktop computers? As far as I know, it's only on desktop. That's yeah. something I should explore. Yeah. Because you're really limited on, on a mobile device. Right. So that my next point was just that, you know, students that are on mobile devices, iOS devices or on Chromebooks, it's still extremely challenging. And I try to convince every student, even if they don't have a laptop, Go borrow your sister's laptop, you know, get on a computer because the sound, you know, advanced sound settings, we cannot do that on the tablets as we've discussed. And um, it's still a big issue, you know. So I just experienced that in all my morning lessons today with my, my kids on iPads. So um, to that note, there is a lot of new technology that's come out. And so the, the, one, the first point I wanted to make is that, you know, I was really pushing everybody to you know, and Joe as well, kind of to utilize software to make your interface work with Zoom, which is still the case for Skype. Mm -hmm. But in Zoom, I don't know when the update happened or if it's been there all along. I don't think it's been there all along. But you can now run eight channels of audio right into Zoom without using LadioCast and Black Hole. So every person, everybody that I've been coaching, most guys are on 18i20s from Focusrite. Uh, on an eight channel interface strip. So all of those eight channels are being recognized by Zoom. Not the case in Skype, but definitely working in Zoom. Um, you can't really, I, I think the sound is a little more raw when you do it that way, uh, as opposed to going through your DAW, but it seems to work really well. So my student, John Schneider, um, you guys have both met him. He, um, he was using his eight channel strip on his drum set. His drums sound great. He's going through his MacBook and then right in with the focus right unit. So that's 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 an update really because I was saying to everybody like it doesn't work, make sure you use Ladiocast and Black Hole and you know Joe and I were talking about those configurations over the last few months. So that's one thing. Um, so and you know you can of course if you're just getting into the interface thing, you could just get a little tiny two channel interface like this and at least you'll have decent mics on your drum kit. This is like 129 bucks for the uh, 2i2 um, or just a USB microphone. If you're really on a budget, this Blue Yeti has an um, instrument setting on it that's pretty good. So this is a USB mic, and at least it'll elevate your audio a little bit more than your webcam mic, right? So those are just a couple little products that everybody's um, been looking at. I, I know a lot of guys that are on the Blue Yeti. Um, and so, so that's kind of, you know, the audio update in a way. But the other thing is I've been testing other switchers, and I had in the last webinar, a lot of people were asking me about this Blackmagic ATEM Mini because the Roland switcher that I was using, which I didn't quite retire yet, which may get retired, is $1,000. And you can't stream with this. You can't live stream with it or capture it into Zoom, so you need this, right, which is $359. So now <laughs> you have... A thousand three fifty nine for the capture device. Remember, we talked about that. So you're at thirteen hundred plus dollars just to start using your, you know, more cameras than one, right? To capture it in. So now Blackmagic came out with this thing for five ninety five that has streaming built in. So it has an encoder, an Ethernet connection, so you can live stream with it. It's got a recorder, uh, a recorder output that goes to a little SSD drive built into it, which is amazing. You can record right to an external SSD drive. And the camera functionality is pretty nice. I mean, that's great. You know, it's slick, man. Just going through the four cameras. And I was doing this before with the Roland switcher. And um, again, you know, it's just really expensive to get someone onto a Roland setup. So like um, I worked with Dave Weckl recently, he went out and got this because I was still working on this platform. And so, you know, uh, Dave's been using this, having really good results with it. And uh, Stanton Moore picked up one. I've been working with him. And, um, and then, you know, finally Blackmagic got me this box to test out. And then 
I shared it with uh, Scott Kettner. You guys know Scott Kettner is an SEN member. So he's been starting to use the A10 Mini in his live stream. So I have a feeling this is going to become the new piece of gear. So if you want to get into multi-cam setups, you could do it a little bit cheaper now, five ninety-five on this thing. And, um, you know, so I just wanted to kind of share that because I, there was a lot of questions about the A10 Mini coming at me. And I, I was taking my time testing it because I don't want to point somebody in the direction of a piece of gear unless I know for sure it really works well. And I've so, sold. So far, yeah. it's working great. And I, I tested it directly out of the box into Facebook, directly out of the box into YouTube, and it streamed really well. And in the new update of the software, they have like they have a mixer, an audio mixer, and a switcher mixer piece of software that comes with it. There's an audio delay built in, so you can offset it up to seven frames so that if your audio and your video are not, not quite there, you can adjust that on the fly. So that's, that's pretty, a great feature. Yeah. That's a great little feature. And in the audio mixer, there's, dyna uh, there's EQs built in, um, dynamics, different compressors, gates, limiters built into this thing. And I'm going to show you one other crazy thing. You can, I mean, this is a rough shot, but you can put your logos. Let me see if that comes up for you guys. Um, you could put you your go. right in there. You can fade to black. So you can do, it's a real TV production switcher basically built into a little box, which is bananas. So if, if you're getting into live streaming, you really can, you can import lower thirds. You could put your titles in um, and, and have that stuff come up on your, on your live stream. So with this little box, you can kind of do a full on production without using OBS if you don't want to, um, open broadcast software, um, which I've been doing a lot of live streaming. And most of my questions these days from my coaching folks is on live streaming. Um, so a lot of the coaching I'm doing, you know, Stan, Scott Kettner, um, Carl Allen now I've been working with is all about streaming and getting those live. Actually, Carl's streaming right now. Don't He's got a that. show right now. Yeah. Uh, right now. <laughs> right, right. Every, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say, there's so many shows going on. I want to show your cameras again, but I, I want to, I want to welcome the great Brian Fraser Moore's with us today. Brian, yeah. I've been dying to get him on an SC. I'm gonna be in touch with you, Brian. We're gonna get you. I uh, would love to have you as a guest. Um, <laughs> but thank you for being here with us. Great player, great educator. He's been, and a great guy, Brian. Fantastic. Jim, show your show your views again. I, I want to make. I want to. Just make it a little bigger so everybody can see the different views. Oh, you through have. the camera views. Yeah. So um, so this this camera that I'm that I'm speaking to now is just a GoPro that I keep with um with a light ring. I keep it by my desk for this kind of stuff. Um, this would be the side view of my drums, which that camera view is what I mainly uh, shoot from when I'm speaking during live streams. This is the overhead cam, and um, mind you, that's also a GoPro. And then the front cam is actually a Canon DSLR camera uh, that is going direct into the switcher. So you're able to bring in DSLR cameras, which is really nice. Um, the one thing with using DSLR, um, if you don't know this already, is you really want to get um, a DSLR camera that has continuous video, meaning that the, the uh, shutter won't go down after 30 minutes, which is the case on the um, on. You, you need to go with a mirrorless camera uh, to have the shutter stay open the whole time or a DSLR camera that has those features in it. So usually you're paying a little bit more for it, but you want clean HDMI and you want um, continuous video from your um, from your cameras. If you're going with like a Canon or a Nikon, if you're going to go up to those more cinematic looking cameras. But I found uh, great results with just GoPros. And um, and GoPros, the price range, you know, you're looking at 350 for a new camera, but you can find like this camera over here on the side. That's a GoPro Hero 5, that's a few years old. You can get those used on the market for 150 bucks, and you know they look good. It's a glass lens, so the lenses are a little bit more rigorous than like zooms that have a plastic lens. Um, so you're not really going to worry about scratching them. And um, and you can get that nice wide view. I mean, that that shot, that camera is two feet, two and a half feet away from my drum set. But it looks like it's a few feet back. 
yeah, the yeah. overhead cam is only uh, about seven feet above the drums, but it looks like it's about 10 feet above. You know, it really looks like it's pretty far away. So, um, so those, those cameras work really well and they're, you know, you can get them on a budget. So, and, um, one other thing I'm just going to bring up real quick. Oh, there's Kettner. <laughs> um, tell me, leave us alone. We're busy. Hey, go away, Kettner. What are you doing, man? Um, this thing, this is bananas. I'm going to show this up front. I'll, I'll, hey, hang on. Let me, let me make it big. I'll get you links on all this stuff. This is nice work, Joe. Stream Deck. <laughs> Um, this is the stream deck from Elgato and the cool thing with the stream deck is this it's a remote control That's plugged in via USB if you're getting into the live streaming game You can set up all your scenes. Let's say you use OBS You can set up all of your scenes on the stream deck and just by the push of a button switch titles scenes any of that stuff but the stream deck is really just a remote control for your computer so notice like some of the icons that are in there. I have Final Cut. I have uh, Google Chrome. So I can hit any button on this little remote and control my computer from it. So let's say you're, you're live streaming, you're at your drum set. You don't really want to work with a mouse and a keyboard. It has macros so that you can pre-program the actions that you might do on your computer, including opening programs, closing programs, switching scenes in programs, um, even um, keyboard hotkeys, like um, shortcuts. You can program shortcuts onto single keys. Um, I also have Zoom and Skype on here. So if I'm at my drums and I just want to open Zoom and I got behind my drums, put on my headphones, and I'm like, oh, no, I didn't start Zoom. I don't have to go back to the computer. I just hit the Zoom button and it opens up. So that's cool. Some fun yeah. stuff with technology that I thought you guys might get a kick out of. And everybody that I've been coaching is is getting excited about this silly stream deck thing. But um, everybody's starting to get into the switchers because, let's face it, you know, without gigs, the live stream is the gig, right? So, you know, you can you can live stream anytime and reach people with what you are doing on your drum kit or what you're excited about. Uh, the other night I live streamed my bass player and I just talking about how we came up with our parts on tracks. So we just went live with that, you know, and it, now you have a show. So, um, there's, there's really a lot you can do. And, and obviously this is where it's at for now, right. For the foreseeable future. So, um, um yeah. Jim, just so I'm clear before we um, move away from this, that new switcher that you were showing, yeah. um, does it, does it, when you set up the audio in that and you stream to Skype, does it defeat the need to set up the Ladio cast and all that stuff? Does it feed it directly into Skype? Yeah. Yeah. That's the other thing. So what, what I've done is, and you know, the one disappointing thing is that the connections for audio on the black magic are eighth inch inputs, not quarter inch inputs, not a big deal, but so you have to get an adapter. And what you can do is I took my interface and ran the audio outputs from one pair of my outputs and just ran a stereo cable into the Blackmagic switcher, okay? Now, when you bring up this, the Blackmagic audio mixer inside of the software, you can adjust your volumes there. You can, you know, work with the, the onboard mixer. And then when you go to bring up your webcam in, let's say Zoom or Skype, you choose Blackmagic audio, you choose Blackmagic video, and the switcher becomes your webcam and microphone. So it's right, but you but nice. you can't if you do it that way you can't you can't um, like if you're running the outputs of your interface you can't mix on the fly right like you're just getting a stereo output aren't you? You're getting the stereo output from your from the front of your interface yeah. So um, but the way I have mine set up and and in Focusrite stuff. I have a stereo pair, which is the same as my monitors. So I have my logic template open and I can basically just mix my drum set however I want. And that's the signal it's sending to the switcher. And then that's the signal it's sending to zoom. Right. So if I have a track loaded up in, in logic, I could have my eight microphones on my drum kit and a track and have that going out to zoom. So, oh, yeah. Great. Pretty thing. Um, Cool. Dom, you have any questions for Jim before yeah, I... Yeah, a couple of things. So, so, I mean, really, what's interesting about it is the fact that maybe where this pandemic started was from the technology industry. 
<laughs> like, this has exploded. So we have to get involved in as much of this as we can. And all these different terms that you're using, which is very, very interesting, is this unfortunately has become a necessary evil that in order to have accessibility to the world, we need to step up our game to bring this attention to what's right. happening. So, right. but Jim, I think what you do so well is, and I've recommended Jim to, to several uh, tons of people, to have a session where you're designing what they need. And everyone's design of what they need is a little different. Right, right. I think, and then people have, people have to, you know, not step into the fear of where am I at? You know, design what you, you want and what you're able to control within your ability of being able to still enjoy performing and teaching. Absolutely. Totally. Jim, I, 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 I uh, love the um, multi-camera. I don't know if you're looking at your doorbell for the Amazon guy or, or beaming into the International <laughs> Space Station. You got all those cameras there? That's so <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's pretty nuts. I mean, the, the one other thing I'll say, too, about the old rig is that I added a, um, a recorder, which I'll, I'll just pick this up real quick. I added a video recorder before, and this thing was $500. And I did this when I did the book with you guys for Wisdom. I was recording my videos onto this SSD recorder. Mm -hmm. But now with the uh, with the A10 Mini, you're able to just go get a little SSD drive and connect it with a USB-C cable. And now you're recording live switching right to this. So, I mean, it's hard to do if you're playing. Obviously, if you're playing drums, you need someone to do the switching for you. Right. But But if you're actually... Um, able to um, either, you know, if you're doing a show, you can produce it and record it right to the SSD drive. Or if you have someone, if you're lucky enough to have someone, they can sit there and do the switching for you, you know. Well, I like, I like Jim, what's on your desk there. I can see the espresso machine in the corner. That's another <laughs> part to add. You that that need enough freaking caffeine to run all this stuff. <laughs> Holy, that's his, most, that's his most essential piece of gear, if anyone knows Jim. That's the most <laughs> That is true. That so, is very true. So, <laughs> Steve, you, um, you brought, uh, and I can share all these links in the comments and also uh, in uh, the SEN forum later, but... Steve, you brought a lot of information too. Do you want to walk us through a couple of the yeah, things? Yeah, so so the you know the, this journey took us to you know a lot of different uh, solutions, audio solutions, and for me, it's mostly been audio. You know, uh, and you know, so many of my students are pretty tech savvy. You know, a lot of them have uh, you know they have their Pro Tools rig, or they have you know they've got their their drums uh, sounding pretty good. Uh, but uh, you had Van on yesterday, uh, so Van, I had uh, Van Romain is an old student of mine from years ago, and so we've stayed in touch over the years. Uh, so right before the end of the semester, I had Van on to do a master class, and Van's really particular about his sound to his credit. So he's got his drums mic'd up, Pro Tools rig, and we, uh, he wasn't as familiar with Zoom, so we had some one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions and just wasn't happy with the audio. So his audio guru uh, that he works with, with Enrique Iglesias, um, found a solution called uh, uh, CleanFeed. So you can go to cleanfeed.net and- uh, Should I bring that up on that? Link? Yeah, sure. And, and it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's a free account. Um, if you wanna go pro, it's $34 a month, but it's really, really easy to use. You sign up for an account. Um, you uh, uh, your audio goes through CleanFeed, and you just send a, send a link out to the participants, right? And you select you select CleanFeed as your uh, your interface, as it were, uh, through Zoom. And the audio was so much better. Now, when we ran tests, the video was also really good. Uh, for the master class, you know, the gremlins got into the system and it was, it was a little bit off, but man, the, the, the audio was, was really good. Nice. Um, wow. Another one that I've, uh, that I've explored a little bit is, uh, here we go. All right. So there's clean feed. Uh, the other one is, uh, listened to by audio movers. It's a download. You install it as a plugin on your, on your DAW. Um, so I installed it in Logic and brought it up and where the uh, stereo bus is, uh, you select uh, 
this uh, listen to plugin. And again, you just uh, you you log into the plugin, uh, get a link to uh, uh, a browser link, send that to your participants, and uh, and it works great too. The the audio is great. It's it's one that the the way I found out about this one, a buddy of mine um, is a he's a, a black metal composer, and he wanted me to get inside his uh, his Pro Tools session. And so he could show me all his plugins and everything. So he used listen to, and it's like you're sitting there in his control room, right? Yeah. Um, so there's uh, it's a really nice uh, tutorial, uh, you know, online. I, I sent you that link as well. You, you don't necessarily have to share that now, but it's you know it shows you how to set everything up. Uh, so right. there, there, uh, the documentation is really good. Uh, there's another solution called Source Connect, which um, you know, people have been using for years. It, uh, and the cool thing about that, so you have to pay for that. It's uh, 35 a month. Um, the demo uses uh, a Vibranet device, which, which is basically, uh, it's, a, it's a wide area network system. So you bring in, you know, Verizon, AT&T, you know, uh, all, all of your connections, and it finds the one, uh, this is Vibranet that does this, it, it finds the one that's that's uh, got the best connection. So you don't have to worry about your, your connection going down. So maybe Dom would be interested in something like that. Uh, <laughs> and so there's a demo online with Source Connect where there's a guy uh, in LA and he has uh, a singer from Chicago uh, doing voice on a, on a pre-existing track, so. That's so, the other, the, you sent that link to me too, Steve, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's Source Connect, and then that, I think I sent you the, the demo link as well. Yeah. So. Do you want me to show that demo link? Sure, sure. It's, it's kind of some interesting stuff. Hey, um, Steve. Yeah. Uh, I've tested Listen To, uh -huh. and I've actually, I was able to have a bass player play his track right into my Logic rig. Yes, right. And while I was mixing <laughs> so yeah that was pretty amazing but um for you what do you think is is more reliable clean feed because i've never tried clean feed clean feed or listen to what do you think listen to is so much uh i mean clean feed is so much easier yeah. right clean feed is a is immediate you jump on you get your free account you the one drag about it was you know we had to send out uh individual links to all the participants so it's right. not like you're going to have 200 people, you know, watching your your master class or whatever. You know, that would be kind of time consuming. Um, and uh, you know, listen to since it's a plug-in, um, you know, you really just have that one link that you can send yeah. out. Yeah. It's a little complicated setting up listen to. I think in the in the it is yeah start yeah. Yeah. We did. We just. Um, I was just about to ask the question that uh, our friend Bobby Angelita. Um, brought up and Steve I saw it in your notes what so you have some experience with jam kazam okay so I'm not the authority on this all right but I did spend two weeks of my life with jam kazam and really you know just didn't didn't it wasn't successful for me um, one thing you need to do is you need to you need to be hardwired you know you have to have an ethernet connection don't don't try to do it through Wi-Fi and they tell you all this they've got some great documentation some great videos um, so I did that, um, and I, I worked with some, some buddies of mine, you know, to see if we could play together. I mean, we were dying to play together, you know. Randy Burnson, who I've been playing with for forever, lives, you know, about a half an hour away. And we, we used to play together all the time. You know, we thought, oh, this is it. You know, this, it looks great. The, you know, the videos look great. Um, there is, however, um, a concert tonight at 6 p.m., right? The Jam Kazam concert, so I'm dying to see what that looks like. But so far, we haven't gotten really over that uh, that latency hurdle. Jim, do you have any experience with that at all? Yeah, so um, I, I experimented with Jam Kazam a bit, and um, I introduced it to one of my students, Vincent LaRusso, which some of you guys know, and Vin decided to really put the time in on it. I didn't really have the time to really sit with it, but... I did find that it sort of worked. You know, I wasn't mm -hmm. thrilled with it. 
Uh, and then Vincent decided to get his whole band to use it and that they were going to rehearse with that every week. And they did it for the last couple of months. Great. And the, the first thing was some of the guys weren't on Ethernet. They had to get wired. So, of course, you have to be wired. You have to be on Ethernet. You cannot do it over Wi-Fi, obviously. Right, right. It does not work. The other thing is some of the guys had slower machines than others. Mm -hmm. So those guys were willing to upgrade their computers. <laughs> so everybody got on a faster machine, and yeah. that seemed to help a lot. The other thing is if you're playing with somebody, let's say, not on the East Coast, and you're on the East Coast, it's not going to work really well, or the latency problem would be greater. So if you're playing with people all on the East Coast, it seems to work pretty well once everybody's on the same page as far as the fast machine Ethernet connection. And then the thing you need to do is every time you play a song, as soon as you finish, everybody hit the resync button and it, ah, okay. it recalibrates everybody and it gets you back on the same page because over time it does drift. Mm -hmm. So if you don't hit that resync button, literally every song you're going to drift further and further away. So that seemed to work really well. And um, I have Vincent writing notes on how he got Jam Kazam to work because I'm doing an ebook on all this technology stuff, and we're going to put in some stuff about these platforms that people keep bringing up. So I want to see those notes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, and, because yeah. I, you know, my I was hardwired. My system's good. Um, yeah. the, the, the guy I was doing it with, you know, he's a tech head, and, and his system was great as well. He was hardwired. We got we got the audio, so it was happening. You know, it was really good. Yeah. But we just, the latency was just, and you know, for, for us drummers, I mean, it's one thing if you're if you're an instrument. I'm not going to cast dispersions on any other instrument, okay? Yeah. But, but most of the other instruments don't have the immediacy that we have. Right, right. And, you know, it drives us crazy if we're 10 milliseconds off. I mean, yeah. it just drives us nuts. You know, you know how it is. You, you play with a bass player, and it's like, ah, oh, man, he's just a little laid back. I don't want to, you know. Well, so, so, you know, it really drives us crazy. So the latency really has to be spot on, you know, yeah. before we really feel comfortable with it. So I want to see those notes because I really want to get something like that working. I think yeah, there's yeah. a, I think there's a, um, the, you, Steve, you mentioned your system is great, that the, the, the ram or whatever on everybody's system has got to be a factor i would think sure yeah. yeah but then you you also have these like so we we were talking we're running this uh on Streamyard. that's the service we're mm -hmm. using for sabian so we're we're broadcasting this on the youtube channel by the way welcome I, some of our viewers who are now watching us on youtube i see your comments so thanks um but we discovered like even with Streamyard, when we were playing some videos before if i share a youtube video I, I share it on my one gig connection upstairs and there's still, it's not playing back totally as smooth. So like you, these, these glitches come up. And as a matter of fact, I wanted to ask Jim and Steve, I don't know if you uh, or Dom have an answer to this too, but I've been having problems with Latio cast crashing all the time. Like it's like, it's, it's gotten unstable. So mm -hmm. I'll probably just try to like reinstall it. Jim, have you, have you encountered any problems with, with that? Cause so many of us are using it now. I know. Yeah. I've had, I've had a couple of people say that LadioCast just quits in the middle of using it. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if, if there's going to be an update coming down the pipe. That's that, and it's a known issue that's going to be fixed. Um, I would say uninstall it and reinstall it and see what happens. Because I, I would think that, you know, it's possible that, that the program or the file got corrupt and that yeah, yeah. it's not working anymore. So I would just try a fresh install of LadioCast and see if that fixes it. it but I will does, look into issues. Yeah, I'll look into it. It, it does just seem that Zoom has made it like, if you want to run multi-channel audio, just use Zoom because it like, it, it just does it. You know, you don't have to deal with any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. And, and for those of you that, that haven't done any of this or a little unfamiliar with this, you know, the, what you need to do is t you take your system uh, and you run it through an interface where you could, let's say you've got a Pro Tools rig, drums are all mic'd up, you bus out a couple of channels to an interface, and you can just use a four channel interface if you want. Um, bus out a couple of channels and then bring your uh, talk back mic into that if you want, your, whatever tracks you're playing in, run that through 
I'm using a PreSonus 16 channel and I run that into Zoom. Right. And, and so I, everything is mixed down there. And um, it's been working great for that. And, and, you know, these other solutions make the audio sound a little better, but. I'll also say, I mean, if, you know, if you're on a budget and you can only afford, let's say, you know, under $200, you can get, like I said, the, a stereo one, right? Like this or like the um, the uh, Motu. But if you get one of these and you have a little mixer, you could use a little five-channel uh, Mackie mixer and run stereo to this and yeah. run it in. And now you've expanded your two-channel interface by having a separate mixer. And that's an inexpensive way to go. You can get a Mackie five-channel mixer for about $89 on Sweetwater. And then now you build a multi-channel setup very inexpensively. Of course, it won't sound as good as a, you know, a, a big rigorous interface, but it's a way to elevate that to the next level. You know, I've, I've been kind of upping the ante on my rig for over 10 years. So it's not, it didn't happen overnight. You know, I started out with one interface and then bought a little bit better one and then added another thing and, you know, one little component at a time. And now I have the National Space Station or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. I, yeah, I, I feel so, uh, you know, underqualified here. You know, Dom's got all his pictures and awards and everything. And, of course, <laughs> you know, Joe's got, like, this great drum set. Jim's got, yeah, he's got uh, NASA behind him. I have, uh, I have a Chihuahua and an <laughs> antique clock. <laughs> you know, but uh, anyway. Oh. There's a bunch of really cool stuff back there, though, so it's just, it's just off screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, Joe, you were talking about the videos with, uh, with StreamYard, and it's, it's really interesting. I think, I think there are, like, s some gremlins in the system that come in sometimes. I, I, I did a show um, with a singer-songwriter group at the university just before the semester was over, um, it's kind of a sad situation, you know, they they really live for this big show at the end of the semester and they sing, you know, their songs and it's like a really great collaborative thing. Well, that went out the window. Um, so everybody did videos and it went pretty well, you know, but, you know, uh, you'll, you'll come back the next day and you have that that stuttery kind of look that you got before, you, just before we started this broadcast that we were looking at. So. Um, and your connection is not the problem, apparently. So. Yeah, yeah, that's it's so weird. But you know, I, as Don said in the very beginning, you know, you just you just go forward and you you deal with the problems. Mm -hmm. You know, necessity is a mother. Yeah, totally. And we, you know, like Dom, you said, we we've been going live so much, and sometimes the you know a user might have a problem or a student might have a problem. Um, Dom, what do you do? What do you do when your student runs into like a technical problem? And now you're like, you've lost time or something in the lesson because of it. You know, it, it's kind of interesting. Listen, it, it could be connection. It could be a few different challenges. It's best sometimes to let it go and just reschedule and just move on and take that time and do something else and give yourself the break. Because if we allow ourselves to get frustrated over technology not assisting us when we need it, there's two levels of technology. When it works brilliantly, connection is strong, this works out well. It's it's like a miracle that we have this, this level of connection. When it doesn't work, I want to drop kick my freaking computer off the roof of my house into a freaking river. You know, <laughs> there's no middle ground here, right? So that, that either we're either we're working well, we're moving along. A slight glitch, we're working well, we're moving along. All of a sudden, it gets fuzzy. It's not good. Let it go. Just let it go. You know, before I get my sledgehammer out to my, my computers here. So it really comes down to rescheduling and having an incredible amount of patience. All of what Jim has put together and Steve's put together has taken patience to research and understand, much like we have the same patience in learning our crafts. We have to make sure that we understand that patience is to wait politely, to take yourself and, and accept each challenge as it comes along. And there are different layers of challenges. There's your connection first that challenges. Then there's the level of computer that you have. Then there's the glitches in the system, whether it's StreamYard or Zoom or whatever. You, there's glitches there. Then there's there's just, you know, if a storm comes by for a moment and satellites are all, you know, out of whack, there's so many different layers that can go wrong. So we just have to have the patience to work with it step by step. Right. 
Man, that's that's great advice. And, and you know, um, sometimes I'll I'll, uh, I'll be teaching a class and I'll have a problem. And you know, let's say the class meets Tuesdays and Thursdays at nine thirty a.m. And uh, you know, if it's a private lesson, I can reschedule. And and there, you know, sometimes you have to remember there's a whole lot more to a class than just talking about, you know, pat a fla flas. You know, right. I mean, yeah. there's. You, you can you can talk about music, you can have a conversation about music and about drumming and about, you know, some more high level concepts. And I think that's that's what you have to do rather than, yeah, I've been in that drop kick my computer off of, off of my house before. <laughs> well, we also have to realize that there are different, you know, ways of lessons. When I had taken my, my lesson with Shelly Mann, I walked into his studio and he had a couple of drums sets there, he had a couple of practice pads, he had a couple of snare drums with brushes on each snare drum. There was this incredible, you know, review of what it was. He put an album on, put an album on, and we listened for an hour. We listened for an hour. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting a, we're getting a little re amping over there. A little re amping over there. It's it's all part of the it's all part of the delivery. We're talking about glitches in the system and uh, system and uh, there you go, there you go. It's happening from everybody. It's happening from everybody. I will say that you know, with uh, with the glitches, you know, we don't always have control over what happens. And you you know, as you said, you just have to keep going. The other night, I started my live stream. Now, I'm a guy. I'm going to show you what I do. Damn. Pre live stream Damn. checklist. Okay. Wow. And then wow. live stream checklist. And this one's for restream, which is what the platform that I've been using. So I have checklists, right? Now <laughs> if I use my checklist, everything goes great. I was pressed for time. I did not use my checklist. And one of the items on my checklist is to make sure that, you know, the audio and video are set to certain settings in all in a few different places one of them being obs one of them being restream so what happened was i had been testing a different switcher that day and a different microphone <laughs> setup and when i went to go live i'm just thinking oh i'm on my regular setup well the mics were set to something completely different i had a different camera setup going i couldn't figure out what was happening people are telling me hey man your audio sounds terrible it turned out that I was trying to live stream with this microphone, the Blue Yeti, from across the room. So my headset mic wasn't being picked up. And it's all because I was running a few minutes late, didn't do my checklist. Everything yeah. went down the tubes for about yeah. five minutes. I got it fixed and then went back to the live stream. But, you know, <laughs> what, you're not going to quit. You're not going to just stop streaming in the middle and cancel the show, right? So the show right. must go on. But right. one thing I will say, if you want, Joe, I can share these with you. By making up checklists for, I have a Zoom lessons checklist. I have a live streaming checklist, a pre-live streaming checklist for different um, platforms. And that way, you know, it's, and it's, of course, it's different for everybody, right? So for like Scott Kettner, I made him his live streaming checklist. And for Stan Moore, I made his own checklist. And you just go down every time you live stream or every time you do a lesson, just go check the boxes. And I guarantee you, most of everything will go well. Of course, there's always ghosts in the machine, but yeah. what can go wrong will yeah. go wrong. We know that, right? That's great. So, let's, um, That's great. Let's, um, let's go to... Uh, let's go to... Uh, are you guys hearing an echo of me? Are you guys hearing an echo of me? No. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Tom, here's an echo. Jim, yes. Tom, here's an echo. Jim doesn't. Um, no, no. Um, how do we convince students not to How do we convince students phone? not to just use a phone? Woo. You know what? I'll, I'll, I'm going to just give you one quick way. And what I did was, you know how you can record in Zoom? I record the lesson in Zoom, send it to them, and then they're going to hear your drum set compared to their drums. And I will tell you that, not to say that they have to go out and get a rig, but when they hear the difference, sometimes it makes them go, huh, wow, that's awful. <laughs> and um, Or, you know, if it's a young student, I send it to the parent and and... And then I just make those suggestions. Try using a laptop rather than an iPad. Um, we'll have better results. But sometimes when they hear themselves on the video and the, and the audio is dropping out and coming back, it kind of 
has an aha moment for them, you know? That's sure. My... Sure. And there are also so many factors. And there are also so many factors of why the student may be using why the student may be using a phone. There could be cost issues, there could be cost issues, their family, their family, their you don't know, everyone's fighting their own battle. Everyone's fighting their own battle. Yes, and we're experiencing glitches yes. right now. We're experiencing glitches like right now. Voice is echoing. Voice is echoing. Nice. Um, yeah, I think all of us but Jim. I think all of us but Jim. Hmm, that's interesting. Hmm, Jim, interesting. or any of you guys, uh, we're dealing with the echo, but um, we're dealing with the echo, but um, any solutions for any solutions student, for student, younger student, younger to play student, along with tracks, updates on that. Tracks, updates on that. I've had a couple of my students buy an I've inexpensive interface, and it works great. Interface, and it works great. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, one thing is, you know, I the the inexpensive interface is definitely a thing. If if students can't play along to tracks for you, in, let's say in the lesson, I just have them record it. So, you know, I'll tell my student, just take your iPhone, prop it up somewhere, play along to the track, you know, either use an amplifier in the room, um, have your computer speakers. I mean, if you're talking, you're talking about getting it live and, and for you to being able to hear it, um, without an interface, it's a little tough. If they have an amplifier, you could do it that way. Um, I mean, my, usually I just tell them if they can, just get something little, a, a cheap interface, you know? What would you say, Steve? Right, same thing. Um, right, same thing. Um, I've had all levels, I've of, had all uh, levels. of students. And, you know, the, the highest level was, you know, the drums are mic'd up, everything's great. You know, I, I, I uploaded some tracks, drum, drumless tracks online, and they would come back as a class uh, ha having their drums recorded. And then there were some that, like you say, you know, had to, just use playback through a speaker and you know use a uh, voice memo on their phone, voice and, memo on their phone. and of course jim you're exactly right after a couple of weeks of that it's like man i need to invest in some equipment now right and uh you know there you have to take into account the economic situation you know so i think if you if you want something enough you'll find a way you know, you, you'll find it online, used or whatever. But, you know, um, I, was, I was doing some recruiting was, for the university right at the end of the semester, um, or mid-semester. One of my recruits said, you know, I come from an area that's not a, you know, not a high economic area. And, and man, they just cancel classes. It's over. And then I have some other people that are totally not in that boat. And... You know, they can afford the other stuff, but I, I really feel that, you know, you'll find a way to do it somehow. Uh, you know, that necessity is really, you know, the mother of invention. Yeah. I remember years ago, I, you know, I wanted some, some trigger pads and I couldn't afford them. And I ended up getting these little transducers that come with greeting cards and put them inside <laughs> Crisco cans, you know. <laughs> Ran it into my Lindrum. Into my Lindrum. And, uh, so. Yeah. Um, what I was getting to, by the way, Jim, I, I noticed I have your mic muted because the echo is coming from your system. It's strange. Yeah. Strange. Like, see. Yeah. Like, well, see. I am trying this new thing today, so I'm not sure, um, you know, I mean, we can try muting it and then unmuting it. Is it still echoing? Uh, I think it's okay now. Uh, I think yeah. it's okay now. Yeah. Oh. oh. Okay. It's so let me just say I'll unmute you when you speak, Jim. If I mute you, it's okay. So um what I was saying was uh in the last few weeks as online lessons have gone on, with a lot of my students, I've been just asking them, and I think I mentioned this one other session, to just if they want to do tracks, they'll buy an inexpensive interface and just one microphone, two two channels, and then they can plug in their phone. And most of them have done it. Um you know, with Ross had asked that question about um, how do you get the student to not use their phone. I kind of look at it the same way, you know, I, I would be teaching teachers and, you know, of course, we all teach teachers, um, a lot of us listening as well, the, you know, and I would get the question, 
what what if I do if the parent doesn't want to buy the book if they you know they they don't want to buy the books I'm suggesting it's like well no you th there's someone has to be in charge of the lessons and it's the teacher it's me so um, so if they're having a challenge on the phone you know the big challenge is the connection so just about all of my students who I've told them and their parents the connection is too glitchy you need to get a, an extender of some kind they they all want the lessons to be a good experience and they've all done it so right. I think you just have to be like you know in a nice way just explain that they need this stuff to make the lessons happen at the, at the level it needs to happen and they've all done it and then you know then you have to help to try to tech support them through it if they have a problem but they almost always will will try and you you know be reasonable you're not asking them to spend a million dollars it's a smaller amount yeah I bought a router a while back and it doubled my internet speed my Wi-Fi speed you know right I mean that that in itself, you know, get a fairly inexpensive router and, uh, you know, it'll really improve things. Yeah. Let's see if Jim is still echoing. Let's see if Jim is still echoing. Oh, he still is. Yeah. Oh, he still is. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at this. Uh, it's the switcher. The new switcher feed is a little out. So I'm trying to troubleshoot it right now. Well, we're about through with the hour. So we're going to wind down anyway. But, um, that this is a great we, online technology webinar, and we discovered glitches in the system, and we <laughs> saw it in real time. Uh, it, uh, it, Jim, let me unmute you um, so you can uh, have a final word, and then I'll uh, and then I'll turn your mic off so we can mic off so we can. Okay. Um, are you hearing me? Okay. Do you, do you have me? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, you know, basically. Um, I'm always testing new gear, uh, and by the way, uh, I do a lot of coaching on the technology stuff, and I have a discount for SDN members, so uh, if anybody does contact me, um, there's a good discount for SDN members, so, um, you know, just let me know that you're part of SDN, and, you know, we'll get your rig going, um, and, you know, things are going to keep changing. It's changing very rapidly. It's changed already from March till now. We've seen a tremendous change in technology, and I'm trying to stay on top of it and help everybody out, but um, I appreciate you having me as a guest today and uh, talk to you guys real soon. Thanks, Jim. I, 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 do, I just want to show, uh, I have a link, by the way, to uh, a wonderful book that Steve co-authored with Jonathan Joseph, another great Sabian player. Steve, can you just in one minute talk to about the book uh, very briefly? Sure, yeah. Jonathan was a student of mine many, many years ago, and uh, uh, he, uh, he started playing with Richard Bona, great African bass player, and really got into especially the triplet-based uh, African styles. Um, and he sounded me a few years ago. We stayed in touch over the years. He said, man, I've got some ideas for a book. Let's get together. He said, I've been working on this stuff since 1998, so um, I think you better get into the woodshed and, and uh, start playing catch-up. So, so uh, we got together on this book, and it's, it's, uh, it's called Exercises in African-American Funk. And, and there it is. Oh, there it is. Um, <laughs> all right, great. And, and basically, it's, it's, uh, it takes the Cameroonian-styled uh, triplet rhythms and uh, takes it into the, uh, into the funk realm. Uh, it's really some really challenging stuff and it will make you aside from just the technical thing it'll make you hear things really really different it starts out as uh something for for everybody just some conceptual stuff and ends up with all the the drummy stuff you know so yeah great dom dom has a I, the endless uh pit of every drum book ever written he <laughs> no matter what book i mention he whips it out it's thanks like, dom <laughs> Be careful when you say whips it out, but I understand what you're saying. <laughs> With this, Jonathan's book, this is a Modern Drummer publication, and uh, Modern Drummer has mm -hmm. got several sort of books that are fantastic in what they're doing. It's also available uh, in digital format on the Hudson music.com and it's just a great great book to have and it really opens your mind up Steve. what you've done is fantastic yourself and jonathan it's really good information thank you thank you well guys we're going to wrap up for this week i want to especially thank dom as always thank you for being here with me uh, and running uh, you had a great session with john lamatina yesterday that was wonderful yeah. it was on after we did with fan steve always a pleasure to have you back yeah man with your expertise anytime uh, uh we'll, we'll be just when you think you're out we're going to pull you back in so you know <laughs> So. I, I, I do want to say, you know, to the listeners out there that are getting 
getting down, getting a little depressed with all this. Look for the positive in this. Um, you know, there's some really, really good skills that you'll get out of this. One of them is just finding the time to listen to music. And uh, so there, there is positive that you, that you can get from all this. Absolutely. 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 Well said. And remember, hardwired. This is very, very important. Listen, we were hardwired back in the 60s during Woodstock, <laughs> so we're way ahead of the curve here. <laughs> uh, and on that note, uh, we're going to wrap it up for the week. Thanks for another great week, everybody. We have uh, Dom on back uh, at 2 next week. Another great roundtable coming up at the end of the week. So 2 o'clock on Thursday, 2 o'clock on Friday. Uh, the next webinar is going to be early in the week after that. I'll send you guys a reminder. I'm very excited to have the great Will Calhoun as my guest uh, in about 10 days from now. So so everybody have a great weekend. We'll see you next time. Sabianed.com. If you haven't joined yet, you're lame. you got to go there and sign up immediately. <laughs> have a great weekend. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. <laughs>